So good day everyone, for today we will be talking about the last two types of knowledge. So before we proceed, let us first read the objectives. First is to identify the different types of knowledge and also to define the different types of knowledge. And lastly, appreciate the importance of learning and knowledge acquisition. Acquisition So the first type of knowledge that we will be talking about is the legitimate power of knowledge. Knowledge is so powerful for it can make and, and make us even our stronger, strongest relationships. The power of knowledge cannot be underestimated. In fact, it is one that can build an empire and the same thing that can topple it down. However, not all forms of knowledge are legitimate. For there are types of knowledge that are ill-structed. Knowledge that is true and legitimate can be used meaningfully and can work for our most honest human endeavors. Dealing with its legitimate power equates with understanding its process. To be considered legitimate, knowledge has to undergo basic processes such as its rational, empirical, and pragmatic stage. So, rational. Knowledge is rational if it is based on correct premise. That is, if we have correct premise, then it is logical. Then, empirical. Knowledge is empirical if it can be verified. For something to be empirical, it has to be measurable and reliable. It must be noted, however, not all measurements are empirical. Our knowledge is meaningless unless given correct interpretations. And the third stage is the pragmatic. When we say pragmatic, we refer to practical results. Our knowledge should be practical to make such knowledge usable. So simply, specific knowledge can be applied or used in real life situations. If not, then su such does not possess the legitimate power for it lacks usability and practicality. Its legitimacy equates with utility, visibility, or practical implications. So that is legitimate power of knowledge. Moving on, let us now proceed to organization of semantic knowledge. So um, let us have a review of what semantic knowledge is. So semantic knowledge deals with generalizations, categories, concepts, facts, and their associations. Learning tasks in the classroom should be arranged according to how this can be facilitated. Any learning content is organized along a continu continuum ranging from specific to general. It means that learning content is composed of huge number of rele relevant information called facts, concepts, categories, and generalizations. Facts are things that are known to be true. Facts are very specific bits of information that relate to a specific event, person, object, or situation. Facts never stand alone. They are always interpreted and have ascribed meaning. Usually, students interpret, interpret and ascribe meanings based on their per own personal experience with very little consideration of peop other people's lives. So these are the, f the following are a specific example of facts. The first one is Christopher Columbus, an Italian Spanish navigator, sailed west across the Atl Atlantic Ocean in search of a way to Asia. And the second one is Mahabharata is the longest epic in the world. These bits of information are very specific and possess very limited capacity for providing explanation. For instance, the knowledge about Christopher Columbus as a navigator cannot, be, cannot help students solve their problems in math. In the, in the same way, their knowledge about Mahabharata as the longest epic poem in the world cannot teach them how to solve algebraic expressions. Moreover, it cannot help them evaluate the pros 
and cons of using the new education curriculum. These bits of information will always be meaningless and useless if the students lack the needed information about actions, events that happened during the time of Columbus and how such um, have affected their lives as students and as individual citizens. In like manner, the knowledge of Maba, Mabar, uh, Mahabharata as the longest epic in the world is insignific insignificant unless students know how such epic has shaped, shaped literature that deals with significant human experience. Facts remain useless if students fail to see their connections to their actual lives. They might remain superficial and trivial if students fail to connect them to their, to their prior schema. However, facts are important building blocks of a higher level of knowledge. Facts should be differentiated from the following. So, data. Data are the things gathered through the process of research. For example, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on are data. These are not information because they are meaningless. They become meaningful only when they are interpreted. Aptly put, the data 0919561715. It doesn't mean anything to us. However, if we chunk them by putting parentheses and das da dashes such as parentheses 0919 da, uh, parentheses 561 dash 7157 now they can be well understood and easily processed in our brain the numbers are now interpreted as cell phone number cell phone number is now important bit of information and not a mere a mere series of numbers. In hindsight, it must be clear that data have to be interpreted and that they are based on meaning, construction, and are open to control and, re and re relativity. Next is information. Information is a definite knowledge. The information superhighway of the internet is an incredible rich source of information on virtually all aspects and disciplines. However, information is not always knowledge. Information does not become knowledge un unless we think critically about it. Information is transmitted to us through teaching, reading literature or media or through the use of our senses. Data are information when meaning is added. In other words, our students receive data through senses, such, such as vision and hearing, which allow them to process data into information. So the next is ideas. Ideas may be suggestions, impressions, or opinion. For example, if there is meeting to thresh out problems of vandalism, we ask for everybody's opinion. We use the brainstorming activities to generate ideas and suggestions. Ideas form of our own thought or imagination. Ideas that are triggered by suggestions are called hitchhikes. And the th last one is wisdom. Wisdom is gained through experience. It is a wise decision formed from great knowledge and experience. Now let us move on to concepts. So concepts are labels given to categorize information or things that have common characteristics. Concepts are the basic units of thinking. Concepts are general categories of things, events, and qualities that are linked by common features. Facts serve their important roles in acquiring and understanding concepts for example for example learning as a concept helps us develop knowledge about motivation reinforcement or feedback when we hear the concept of evaluation 
it helps us organize a huge amount of information regarding grades, the use of rubrics, scores, assessment, strategies, transmutation, mean, mode, median, and so on. Concepts are very important because they allow our minds to categorize and organize large amount of information in an accurate manner. Concepts are general ideas used to identify, distinguish, and relate the different aspects of our experiences, which allows us to organize our experience into patterns that help us make sense of the world. So simply, concepts should be properly formed and organized because they give us insights on how we interpret experience or anticipate what will happen next concept uh, formation is very essential because it helps us generalize and interpret or and interpret the things that happen to us um, according to Caffey in 2003 there are three different structures of concepts the first one is properties signs and reference so properties are common characteristics shared by all the concept examples of concepts. Signs name certain concepts. There are they are the words or phrases in spoken or written forms. On the other hand, reference are typical examples of those concepts or the concrete objects that the symbols re- represent. In a semantic triangle, we see the interplay among the three important elements signs or symbols reference and concepts for instance the concepts chair stool and bench share the share some common qualities or properties there are a piece of furniture usually with back and four legs for a person to sit on a chair is usually with back or arms on the contrary, a stool is without back or arms. A bench is usually without a back that is long enough for two or more people to sit on. We say that chair, for instance, is not an object. It is a symbol used to name or label such object. On the other hand, reference are simply examples of such concepts. For instance, we have electric chair, monoblock chair, rocking chair or wheelchair as reference so we have here a figure um in the top is the properties and at the bottom are signs and reference so properties are common qualities that all examples of concepts share in common signs are words or symbol that name a concept and reference are examples of concept. The next one is the categories. Categories is a class or division of people or things regarded as having particular shared characteristics. According to Stemberg in 2006, there are types there are types of categories. There are natural categories, artifact categories, and nominal categories. Natural categories are natural groupings that occur in a natural setting. For example, the universe, the star, and the other members of the solar system are natural categories. Also, the butterfly, birds, flowers, trees, and rivers are examples of natural categories. Artificial categories are man-made categories. Examples are books, schools, curricula, gadget, machines, or equipment. Nominal categories are arbitrary. That they are labels assigned to a situation or things that is pre-specified. If natural and ar- artifact categories have stable meanings, it is assumed that the meanings attached to nominal categories change. For illustration, the concept neighbor has a nominal category. It means that its meaning is unstable. A neighbor may be a friend or an enemy who lives nearby, or one who lives next door. 
A neighbor may also be a fellow being. The use of categories provide an understanding of individual cases we have ne never seen before. For example, we see an orange for the first time. It is impractical to categorize it as an apple. Being able to call it an orange provides great deal of knowledge about what categorizes I characterizes an orange and what makes it different from any other types of fruit. And this is one of the functions of categories. Categories do not only provide basic knowledge about certain objects but also give an idea about some properties of things that um, belong to other categories. When we know that something is in a category, we should have a great deal of knowledge about it. So lastly is generalizations. So these are statements that contain the if, then, or predictive characteristics. They show relationships among concepts. Using a generalization in relation to learning could be as reinforcement increases the as reinforces increases the le level of motivation, the pattern of learning change. As we see, this generalization expresses relationship among reinforcement, motivation, and change. This generalization indicates that if the level of motivation increases, the pa patterns of learning also change. When students understand the if-then statement, they can predict some things that might happen when reinforcement increases. Generalization have explanatory predictive power across time and space. Using the same generalization as reinforcement increases the level of motivation, the pattern of learning change. We can prepare a lesson with various activities in order to increase level of complexity, complexity so that we can change their learning patterns. So that's it. Thank you.